Hello there, Codemaker4 here. In this video, I'll be explaining how my mini cards work. If you haven't seen the showcase video yet, go to the link in the description or iCard or whatever and check it out because I put way too much effort into it. If you have already seen that, then let's continue with this video. So the main thing that makes these cards work is the concept of the rail system. Basically, there's a long slit in the road. A mini cart has two little pegs under it, one in the front and one in the back, that will go through that slit in the road. You can use wedge blocks to create corners, move blocks around to make switches, and paint the road different colors to make the cart do different things. The fact that the cart follows a single slit in the road instead of two separate ones like with a normal train system makes the intersections and switches way simpler. I've been working on this concept for years now and I don't think I can make this any simpler. The cart itself is very compact. There are only 19 blocks of space for logic after you put in all the engines, wheels, double bearings, sensors, controllers and decoration. It took multiple revisions of the logic system to make the logic compact enough to fit in this small space. The basic behavior of a cart is simple. Because of the two engines and the double bearings, a cart can move fast, slow and stay still. A cart cannot move backwards. By default, a cart will move forward slowly. If it detects a red painted obstacle within five blocks in front of it, it'll stop. The obstacle can only be the back of another cart or a gate. If the road is painted green on their space for the next 20 bucks, the cart will go faster. If the cart detects a blue painted road, it'll stop, wait a bit, open the doors, wait for 10 seconds, close the doors, wait for the doors to close and then continue like normal. If it detects a red painted road, it will only stop for 3 seconds without opening the doors. This is mainly handy for separating out carts before a gate, preventing multiple carts from going through without giving the gate enough time to close. A simple station with no intersection is quite simple. Just make a plateau for the passengers and paint the road blue for 3 blocks in length. Also, make sure there's no green road just before the station to make sure the cart goes slow enough to be able to stop in time. Because the cart has front wheel drive, the cart might tip to the front too much if slown down too quickly. To prevent this from happening, when the cart leaves a green road, you have to put an extra bit of green to allow the cart to kind of catch up with itself or release the brakes a bit to prevent it from tipping over. 11 blocks of grey after the green and 2 blocks of green before the rest of the grey seems to work best for this. Make sure to leave some extra grey space before the station so cars can queue up if there are too many coming in at the same time. Now let's introduce the simplest logic rail part that is in the set of rails. The end stop. This is a station for at the end of the line that lets the passengers out of carts, puts some carts in a buffer and releases empty carts back into the network at a set interval. This is handy to make sure that trains keep coming on time and spread out through time. If you just have the carts go through a loop with no interval gates, over time they get bunched up increasing the potential amount of time you would need to wait for a cart. This dosing of cards is done with a small bit of logic. It opens the gate at a set interval and makes sure one and only one card can safely pass each time the interval triggers. The gate is opened by a piston. Although this mechanism might cause lag, it is needed because controllers simply aren't fast enough for this. In practice, the lag this causes is minimal compared to the overall lag of an entire train network. The gate is opened as long as either a memory bit is turned on or if the sensors detect that the cart is in the way and the gate cannot safely close. This means that you can manually release an extra cart by standing in front of these sensors. The memory bit that would open the gate turns on every time the timer is triggered and turns off once the sensors detect that the cart is left successfully. There are three timers in a loop that have one, one tick pulse going through them. It has to be done with three timers, because logic gates can reset when reloading the vault. The timers don't reset, so once this is set up, it will keep working forever. There is also a version of the end station that can dose two different card colors separately. This is handy if you want to have one end station that can be shared between two train lines, but with a separate dosage system. 
the extra logic isn't that complex, just two copies of the same logic described before, plus some extra that prevents two gates from being open at the same time, and a bit that makes sure the trains are sent to the correct buffers with this switch. Now, let's look at the logic for this four-way crossing. In this version, there are no switches. Cards can only go straight through. And the logic only needs to prevent collisions between cards. So the logic isn't as complicated as it looks. Basically, all the gates take turns checking if there is a card waiting at their station. And then if there are other cards in the way. If all conditions are okay, it will allow one card to pass through the gate using some logic that we already discussed in the end stop stations. Because the stations take turns checking if the gate should open, the system will not release two cards at the same time if they arrived at the station at exactly the same time. The system that makes sure that the stations take turns is quite big, but it has to be because the previously discussed issue with logic resetting. It is basically a big binary counter, and the last few bits that flip the slowest control what gate should check stuff at what time. There's also a T-junction. Trains can go either to the left or to the right, depending on what blueprint you use, as making them be able to do both made the intersection a bit too complex and dense. The logic is similar to the four-way crossing, but with a few extra gates to control the switch. The controller block that moves the switch is hooked up to a new memory bit that turns on if a cart is detected that needs to go around the corner while the gate opens, and turns off after a few seconds. And the four-way switch intersection is just a mashup of the previous two intersections I already explained. Because this intersection is the most complex of them all, it has gone through hours of testing, and although it can look a bit sketchy and janky at times, it has proven to be very reliable. There is just one failure case for these intersections though. When you reload the world, some logic will reset. If this happens while a cart is on the intersection, the intersection logic will forget that it was there and allow new carts on the station. This isn't always a recipe for disaster, but it will cause big problems when the cart is going around the corner on a switch while the logic resets. The switch will go back to the default position, causing the carts to either derail or do that multi-train track drifting thing and get stopped by another train also trying to go through the station. This has caused multiple large pile during initial testing. The solution? Connecting all intersections to a central stop switch at the center of the network. Then, when you want to exit the world, turn on that switch. This will make all intersections think that there's a cart on the track right now, preventing them from letting new carts pass through. After a few seconds, all intersections are empty and you can safely exit the world. When you come back, all logic on switches are reset and the network will continue like nothing happened. So now you know everything you need to know to be able to make one of these real mini card networks yourself. So we're going to be building one. Uh, it's going to be quite small and simple. Uh, just two normal end stations without any logic. A single T junction with a switch to demonstrate how that works. And a one of these big double end stations to just for fun. So let's start building. When you open up the blueprints, you might notice that they all have this MC4 pre prefix. Not Codemaker 4, but Minicard 4. That isn't just because Codemaker 4, Minicard 4, haha, <laughs> funny 100. No, this stands for Minicard 4, because yes, this is the fourth iteration. I really meant it when I said that I've been working on this for years. So we're going to search for MC4 stop and double. The, the names are quite uh, consistent, or at least supposed to be quite consistent. 
So when you search, when you want to have a specific thing, you should be able to easily find it. So we are going to be having, as displayed here, a red line on the blue line. So we need to have a red side on the blue side. So there will be two lines coming through here, uh, a red line and a blue line. The sensor will, will be checking if it's a red or a blue line. But if it's set to a blue line, that's going to be perfectly fine. So you can just send the blue line uh, to this side and the red line to that side. You don't have to do this yourself, that's just for clarity. Um, and I also like to mark all the train colors that come to a station on that little pole there. And believe it or not, that's the end station basically done. We still have to actually activate this logic, but we'll do that once we put in all the cards. So next, we're going to be putting in a piece of reel. You can make this as long as you want, but I'm going to keep it pretty short, just for demonstration purposes. You're going to search for minicard 4, rail, and then uh, 60, and if all the different lengths, so 64, 64 blocks. Uh, we do have 1024 blocks, that's the longest single reel piece. Um, but I think this, uh, this 256 is going to be long enough. It's already quite long. Okay, so uh, you aren't really supposed to have all this green just before the station. So just keep a bit of space. There will be two lines on the station, so we need to give even more to make sure some cards can, uh, you know, pile up here. Then we need to leave two blocks of glue. And then 11, so 16 minus 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the pattern you need to make. And at the end, after a station, you can just... And do 16 that it doesn't really make the card safer it just makes it look nice and yeah that's basically everything now we're going to be spawning in the first actual junction you're going to be spawning in a uh, scene for junction t and then with a switch to the left or to the right now we need to actually quickly take a look at that diagram there so for these T junctions, if the switch goes to the left or to the right, it's basically from the perspective from the thing that branches off from the T. So here you have the T, and then you stand from the underside of the T, it goes to the right, so we need the uh, right uh, variant. So MC4 junction T switch are with logic on the stop. This monstrosity. Now let's so this is the side we need to weld it on. Right there. And let's again do that, do that thing with the paint. So keep two drags of space, then two blocks, then 11. Um, these little red things, you can remove them. They are at all these spaces where there are little pegs. Some of them are a bit unnecessary. You can remove them if you want. Maybe it, may, it might reduce lag, I'm not sure. Um, about this weird dark gray painted stuff. Um, this is kind of to tell the game to split off this block of concrete and that block of concrete into two different things. If you don't do this, the blocks of concrete will become too big and the game will make inaccurate calculations. The reasons we use metal here is because um, in some cases, actually it's better demonstrated in the middle over here. Uh, this entire thing needs to be gr needs to be painted green. So because you can't use that trick of just painting it a different color, we use a different block type to make sure it can be the same color but still different from the concrete around it, so it splits up. That's just to prevent uh, scrap mechanic from making inaccurate calculations. So over here we have a blue line on the red line, and the red line will be going to the side here. So the sensor needs to detect all the lines that go to the side. So we need to detect the red lines that go to the side. But we're going to begin by just finishing off the blue lines. So we at least have one thing that can already start running. So at the end, we're going to be spawning another CM4, uh, minicard for rail, 256 to fast. And let's again remove some paint just before the station. And over here, there's actually quite a long piece of road where the cart can go through safely uh, at higher speeds. So we're going to remove these red things. You don't have to do that, but ju it just looks nicer. And we're going to add a bit of a green. You ha don't have to do that. It'll just mean that the carts will go faster overall. In fact, we can probably also do that over here. Just don't come too close to the actual switch itself. So on this end here, we're going to be adding a end stop. 
it's just going to be turning around the cards. No fancy logic. The fancy logic is all on, on that side. So we're going to see him for stop and uh, stop and nothing special. Uh, this part might lag a bit. Again, it is because all these uh, anti lag is gone. You see, all these different parts of concrete, they're all individual pieces. And because they lay flat on the ground, each and every individual piece of concrete is going to be colliding with the ground. That's just a lot of calculations. Uh, also, I have to fix this in the final blueprint, but this blue stuff, it's on the wrong side. Um, and again, let's add a little extra safety. Yeah, it's already some distance, so we're going to do one drag, leave two blocks, 11 blocks. And here it's like just after the corner, so we want to wait a bit before they actually start going quickly. Let's just do it like that to make it look nice. Uh, and this will be the end of the blue line. Now let's finish off the red line. So again, we need to place a piece of rail over here. Uh, it might hit the station and trigger some of the sensors. Not a big deal. The station is a is the station logic is designed to self recover from almost any state. So yeah, again, remove some paint. You've seen this before, and maybe add some extra green over here. This will be the red line. Uh, this type of station, we don't have to put a switch uh, sensor here because it's just always going to go to the right. This is this doesn't even move or anything. It's just smart switch directions. Uh, now let's place down the final station. Again, you've seen this before. Uh, stop. Yes, it lags. I know this is only temporary. Remove some green. Remove some red. Remove some green. Remove even more green, but only 11 blocks this time. I think, I think this will be good enough like that. Uh, and this will be the end of the red line. And I'm sorry, this blue is on the wrong side. It has to be on the left side. You can just put it on both. It won't confuse the card or anything. Uh, and that's it. All the rails are placed down now. So now we're going to be placing down the first few uh, mini cards. So I'm going to search for MC4 cards. As you can see, I have a few colors. So I'm going to have a blue line. So let's spawn a few blue cards and put them in the right uh, place. Same for the red. So the trick for this is to make sure that while the lift is on there, the peg is to the side. So these cards are six blocks wide. So there's a controller that moves the peg to the side a bit. Like that. So you can spawn it incorrectly. Like that. Uh, now we need to start up this logic. So it's going to be spawning one card every uh, minute. So it takes two minutes per, per blue card, two minutes per green, per red card by default. But that's a bit slow. So we're going to make. So this timer here is uh, like for uh, per line. So you're going to set this to one minute in total. So one plus zero plus zero is one minute. And we don't want these launching at exactly the same time, so we put a 30 second delay in this. So every one minute it's going to send out a blue one, and 30 seconds later a red one as well. What you then do is you press the button with a spot gun to create a one tick pulse. That's important, a spot gun. Remove the button uh, and make the connection from this timer here to that timer, so that it's now a loop. This loop will never ever break. Unless you put it on a lift, but if the logic resets because you reloaded the world, this won't break. Uh, so that will get going soon. Uh, maybe let's also add some extra cards while we're here. It doesn't really matter what order you put it in, the logic is safe, it won't put too many cards into the buffer or anything. It'll be quite smart about it, look. So now it's time for the blue one to uh, exit. So now this one here detects that there is space for another blue card here. No space for a red card. It detects our red card over here, so it's not going to let the red card in because so it will clog up the system. And now a red card is coming through. There's space in the red card, so the red card can go to the buffer. And the blue card can be over here. Let's spawn another blue card and another red card. 
So while the network is starting up, as in the first cards are going through, you need to kind of top it up a little bit all the time until they start coming back. Uh, then you can get an idea of how many cards you need to keep the uh, network full. That's going to depend on how long your network is, of course. In general, you want to keep uh, between uh, one and two cards in the station, usually. Um, if there's a, if it does happen that there is a, a third card of a specific type waiting at the stop that can't go through, it means your station is too full. If you end up with a situation where there's no cards for a specific color uh, at any time, that means it's too empty, but you can only decide that once the cards start coming back and the network has been filled up properly. So as you can see, the cards are now coming through at a regular interval. And there the first blue card is coming back. So now is a good time to judge how many blue cards we have. A blue card just got released. That's a blue one, right? Yeah. So we'll have between... Uh, you, most of the time will be two in the buffer, sometimes one for a short amount of time. That short amount of time has just passed. So if that's pretty optimal. Um, if you're unsure uh, if there's too much or too little, go for too little. Um, if this flows over and there's too many cards over here, it can clog up the rest of the system more easily. Um, with the single line and stop, that's less of a problem. So now there's a red card coming in and just like the last one, there's exactly enough. Maybe a little bit much, but that's, that's all right. So this system is uh, working now. You now know how mini cards work, how to make your own networks. You're a smart person now. Subscribe, uh, go to my Discord server if you have any questions or want to show off your nice network. If you want to have a real amount of fun, go to the map editor, make a custom map for your real network. And maybe plan it out in paint instead of in scrap mechanic. Anyways, I'm Code Maker 4. Bye.